uh, very topical and, and, and the cliche of, of the program. I did my volunteering service, European volunteering service in 2012 in an entity called Moja de Caña, where I work today. And I came from Serbia to Canary Islands. My plan was to stay for 11 months. And here I am 10 years later, uh, coordinating projects, coordinating volunteers. Um, and that is why, one of the reasons why I, I am now participating in the webinar. Um, so I will, I will really briefly go through, through the, to the project part. So this summer, for the first time ever, we did European Solidarity Corps project high priority area. Um, in Mojo de Caño, we do a lot of different things. And let's say that the common value of all of our projects, because we work in different Canary Islands and in mainland of Spain as well, we are in Cordoba. Um, it's always social inclusion and human rights. How we do it, it's different. So we have different departments. We are more than uh, 60, 70 workers uh, in different uh, offices and headquarters. So we have like production of events, environment, uh, social program, and then their international program. And what we usually do is we mix, obviously, and we work very well together. So Mojo de Caña started 21, 22 years ago in Canary Islands as a group of young people doing circus. Um, so circus has always been very, very present in, 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 our, in our daily um, work and let's say philosophy, you know? Um, and circus, ever since I came to the island, I realized it's a very powerful tool for, for inclusion. It's something I think very common. No? It happens as well in, in scenic arts in, in general, no? with theater, with music, the bond that you get with the group, it's, it's incredible and people really get united. Let's say in more um, team building, cohesion, yeah, like much, much more um, closer and faster. So anyway, um, the project that we did in, in Serbia, like I said before to Brian, it was pure coincidence, not anything related that I'm from Marisa. And we did a project, so we presented in 2020, which was, um, I was just not trying to remember, but I think it was actually during the quarantine or maybe after the quarantine. Um, um, because, um, and it was very ad hoc and hectic period. Now, obviously, um, nobody knew when we were be able to do the project, how the, the reality and practicality of it would be, um, but we really tried to present and we really wanted to present this project um, in, in Serbia. Uh, we wanted to offer to young people a perspective of country that is Europe, but it's not in the European Union. Um, it was really, really uh, difficult as well after COVID and during COVID in Serbia because they didn't even have quarantine, like only on the weekends because the economy of Serbia cannot be stopped. You stop it, it collapsed. So it, there were many, many um, issues. And, and let's say that even if the society is already still recovering from many socioeconomic um, events from the 90s and 2000s, I think that COVID as well highlighted you know, the difference in between the poor part of the society and the very rich. Um, so we did Circus for Inclusion, the project. Um, it's a project that we have been doing for 10 years already. I just got back from one youth exchange. So we usually do the, those kind of youth exchanges. Uh, during the year, we have partner uh, all over the Europe, and then we do the same project, adapted to the local context, and we have like a European tour of, of CICLUS performances, not every year. But this year, we tried it to, we wanted to do it with Solidarity course because obviously, after COVID, you can imagine, well, during the COVID, you can imagine how you know, our feelings were very, very mixed and probably we were much more sensitive maybe to, to some other topics as well. Anyway, we did a project um, in Novi Sad, which in 2020 was a youth capital of Europe. And we did it this year when Novi Sad is a cultural capital of Europe, which was really great because there were many events. Uh, but at the same time, it was a nightmare for us to prepare it logistically because everything was collapsed, everything was full, fully booked. Um, there were like 1,700 events a year culturally. So yeah, logistically, it was a nightmare, but we managed. Um, so we had uh, four circle schools that worked with social circus. 
Um, we had partners from Greece, Kids in Action, from Salonika. Um, then we have a partner from Germany, Kabubasi, from Berlin. It's a Cisco school as well. Then from Canary Islands, we have a mix of Mojo de Caña and a Cisco school that we closely, closely collaborate with. So the participants were from Cisco school. And then in Serbia, we have a partner as well from Belgrade. Um, in, yeah, there isn't like structured Cisco schools that many in Serbia. So we had participants from many different parts of, of, of Serbia who, who attended the, um, the project. Um, so yeah, we met on, we started on 20 of August until 5 of September. So for us, it was 15 days plus two travel days. Um, it's, a, it's a heavy one. Circus usually it's very, um, how to say that, tiring as well, physically. And, and, and uh, to show you, ah, see. And um, yeah, Jan, if you want, we can, we can put it uh, later as well to, to, see the, to see the videos and reels. Um, yeah, so we decided to do it for 15 days. And for us, I think when it comes to organizational part, it was kind of strange because we were used to doing it as a youth exchange, but now it was solidarity groups. So obviously there are many, many differences no? in, in program and how you approach it, how you deal with the learning, how you deal with the participation. And that's something as well I would like um, later like to connect when it comes to last minute dropouts. Um, so yeah, so we, we worked with young people uh, in three major lines. In June, we had a um, preparatory meeting um, yeah, where we basically meet with the coordinators for two days. Uh, we visited a lot of places where we had performances and workshops. I will talk to you about it now. Um, and obviously started preparing the practicalities because um, I think that just one people, one person from the project coordinator team was in Serbia. So obviously it was very important that the leaders and coordinators see the venue get a little bit the sense of the context of how the situation in Serbia is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so many of the like, say practicalities, we already did it via email, a lot of Zoom, a lot of WhatsApp audio messages. And then, um, so the meeting in Serbia was very more specific, concrete venues, you know, like practicalities and, and um, especially when it comes to circus, I'm not a circus performer. So for us to have circus artists attending the venues was really, really important um, to see what is doable and what is not. Um, so we decided to work with young people in three major lines uh, in solidarity groups. Um, basically there was co-living in, in, in an intercultural context, no? When you have a group of young people who spend 24 hours together, um, and then the, the venues where they slept, they were mixed by gender and by nationalities. So obviously that increases the, the awareness and the learning process intensified. No? Um, for us as well, it was really, really important um, to show them maybe a country out of European Union. For many people uh, that we work with, it was a first time maybe leaving the, the Schengen zone. Uh, which was first very intercultural, very, very big intercultural shock that we later as well reflected on about the privileges of having a European Union passport because they were they were standing in the in the in the borders for like four or five hours and they were outraged. Like, Yana, they had us there for four hours. They didn't even say why. And I said, yeah, that's that's normal when you travel from. With a passport that is not the European Union, no. So I really liked as well the, the beginning, if you allow me to say that, because it was very clear as well learning opportunity for us and to reflect as a, as a group. So when it comes to intercultural um, dialogue and, and experiences and reflections and insights, and for for the youth people, it was really really amazing, and we really dedicated every day like time to stop, breathe, and then let's 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 speak up no? and, and to reflect about what, what we saw and what we did. Then we had the workshops. So usually we, we prepare, well, the, the young people prepare the workshops for socially excluded groups. So basically we offer uh, obviously free uh, CIRCUS workshops 
for different target groups. And then the young people, they prepare the workshops that usually are for two hours. They're divided in disciplines. So we had the juggling, we had many juggling workshops because they're obviously different props that you can use. We have balance, we have acrobacy, there were some games, and then there was a clowning as well. So basically when we have the groups of people attending the workshops that we usually collaborate with local entities, they rotate you know, so that they go from one side to another. Um, so we did many, we went to a public orphanage that we had in, in, in Novi Sal, which is called the Cesello. We were there for a few days. We did a group of uh, workshops as well for two days with um, homeless, homeless people. Um, then we did as well workshops with collective, it's called Izadi, which basically uh, they work with LGBTQ plus community in Serbia. Much needed work, unfortunately. Um, and as well, we did workshops with um, youngsters, so under 18 kids who have uh, some kind of physical uh, different abilities and, and diversity. So we had uh, people who were uh, in wheelchairs, I mean, the kids and their families. So they were attending as well the, the, the workshops. Basically, the aim of it is for obviously to provide the users um, an amazing experience where they try new things and, and have capacity to learn something and as well to boost the self-esteem. It is pretty amazing when in, in 15 minutes you, you learn how to juggle with three balls and that's something always you know, very tangible for, for people. They, they work with their senses, they feel the senses. Um, and then obviously to see how circus is adapted and how it is communicative and inclusive tool because you can have uh, a boy from Greece who doesn't speak English with a boy or a girl from Serbia who is in a wheelchair and then they make a small performance in 10 minutes and they communicate with, with circus. So that's something always very powerful and, and inspiring. Uh, I always get emotional. <laughs> and, um, and then the last part of the project was um, the performance. So um, we were supposed to have a performance where um, youth, that's how we do it as well, the youth exchange. So during those days or weeks of, of co-living, beside doing the workshops, they as well perform, um, they prepare a common performance. Um, usually then we perform in a local theater and um, we don't have the entrance, so we don't sell tickets, but we have like donations. So before entering or after leaving the theater, people can donate the money and then we donate that money to different entities that we usually work with during the week. Um, do some logistical um, surprises. Uh, we had to cancel the performance uh, and that was like a week before we started. So we had to improvise a little bit. We did a lot of small performances in the city. Um, I don't know if someone from Novi Sad municipality would see this because we didn't have uh, all of the licenses to perform, <laughs> but it was just very improvised, you know, Sifco Street performances. And, um, and then as well, we decided to do like a small documentary. So it was uh, video recorded and edited and scripted everything by youth. They are still on it. We do have some teasers and, and videos that I can share with you uh, later on. And we have a co-founding campaign. So because we were not able, obviously, to raise the money through the theater and performances and audience, we decided to have um, yeah, like a crowdfunding on online. No? So we raised an amount of money. And then what we will be doing now is that we will divide that money in four parts so that each country has a proportional part, so 25% of, of the donations. And then the group of people, they have decided to whom to donate the money uh, in their local entities. So thanks to the donations that we have, um, down Las Palmas, which is an entity that works with people with Down syndrome, will be receiving some you know, part of the, of the money. Um, in Kids in Action in Greece, they have decided to donate the money to an entity that which name I cannot pronounce, but they work with a Roma community in Salonika and refugees, um, and then they will be attending Circus workshops, things to the money. In Berlin, they have decided to donate the money um, to an entity, uh, it's called um, uh, Frau, Frau Olga, 
travel guide and uh, they work with women um, who have been through abusive relationship and gender violence and as well they support trans women um, and lately in Serbia uh, the money will be donated as well um, it is like a campaign where people with um, what's the word for that that this is not correct strange like with difficult uh, illnesses they can gather money for their medical treatment and actually one of the boys who attended our workshop is there because he's a tetraplegic um, so the money will be donated to, to him um, it's a queen, very nice coincidence we had him on, on, on the workshop so the group obviously decided to donate the money as well to him everything that i'm saying was decided prepared and managed by youth um, and um, yeah, that's something that, that, that um, as well, we really enjoyed, you know, and that's what I think that the European Solidarity Corps should be as well for them to be the, the main actors and, and performance in, in, in the project. And, um, and yeah, and obviously they managed and they proposed and they uh, implemented many, many activities while as well uh, learning and, and, and growing. Um, I have seven minutes, or we all have seven minutes. Uh, so if you want to ask any, any question or I keep uh, talking, maybe we can show you some video, maybe I can. I will uh, uh, definitely share the, the very, a very short uh, real documentary. This is uh, a, a, a real, um, I will mm -hmm. probably skip the music. <laughs> it's a yes. Sorry. In this, it's a, in this uh, yeah, this is when we went to the public orphanage. Uh, public orphanage has like eighty kids, ninety. Uh, it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful mess. <laughs> Working with uh, because we were like in between the educators and the kids and us, we were like one hundred and fifty people. Uh, but it was really, really great. Um, we were not obviously able to um, show the faces of, of the of the kids, so so the the video itself was very amazingly edited as well by by our youth. And yeah, there you can see the circus in action. Yeah, I saw a question about <laughs> Serbian health system. How many times do you have? Um, let's see. I have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who, who asked. Um, yeah, what we usually do in circus uh, in general, in all of youth exchanges and projects, we always have an additional um, health insurance. I'm talking about people who uh, can go, you know, the silk, the rope, they can go like eight, nine meters high. So we always have an extra <laughs> travel insurance and health insurance. And especially because for many people, a European health card and you know, were not able in Serbia. So we had like a, a private insurance that was a must for all the, all the participants, especially we had a lot of um, health conditions presented in, in, in youth. So an extra medical was, was a must. And actually we, we asked from the beginning uh, in the budget, especially for, for it. And as well, because we applied for a project in 2020, we have a budget for PCR um, and masks and everything related to prevention of COVID, which we as well used, especially because we were working with um, yeah, people who may um, in danger when it comes to COVID and special conditions, especially the kids that we did few last workshops with. So then the participants were um, very happy to proceed with anti-tests almost on a daily basis. But that was something obviously that they fully accepted and, and understand the, the common sense behind those decisions and that um, management prevention risk. Yeah, thank you so much. Amazing story. And yeah, you got em emotional and I got emotional too with you, really. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's incredible mm -hmm. when you're managing these kind of things. It's very, very cool. I want to ask you how to make it sustainable in a long term, because I think that's very interesting. Like we receive many volunteers. We prepare many interesting projects with the talent that we have in this moment, but it's coming and going, coming and going. And if it's a very good project, I think the key is how to make it like last 
because people just go. So in your experience, how you do it? Yeah, and sorry, I don't know as well, I will connect it very shortly to what you asked before regarding the green travels. So sure, sure, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so for example, the groups from Germany and Greece, they came by car, cars, um, which for example, we told them like, look, if you want as well, as well it was a very nice logistically to do um, because of the material and acrobatics, that was really like a beginning of a circus show when you see them arrive at the hostel and they just start bringing the acrobatics and the material and everything. Um, and then we really, 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 um, we introduced, for example, we only had vegetarian and vegan menus on the project. We started this in general, like two or three years ago. Uh, for example, when we do it in Canary Islands, here the water is not drinkable from the tap. So I always, always insist that participants bring their own, um, uh, water bottles, yeah. Um, so yeah, things things like that. Um, how to make it sustainable? In in this case, our answer is our. It it was much easier because these people, majority of them, are already in circles. So for them, it's like the, the the meaning of their life, you know. So they will be and they will keep continue being involved in, in this project. There is one boy in the video from Canary Islands who says. Hi, my name is Sergio. I've been in Circus for seven years and I already attended 14 Circus projects. So they are, they are really into it. He actually did two volunteering in Circus schools all over the Europe. Um, but in general, how to make it sustainable? I, well, I, we always try to have the last moment as well in the projects when we, during the week, explain them what is Erasmus+, Plus, what is ESC, what is Erasmus for Entrepreneurs, and then we have like future steps, no part. <laughs> we always provide them with maybe an hour and a half with our support time where we say, what projects do you want to do? What, what do you want to do? Venga, Let, let's sit and, and, and let's do it, you know, but we use the opportunity that we have them there physically because like you said, later the light happens and then the, the bubble is broken. And that's how we engage them in future. And so far we really were lucky with, with were lucky, successful in, in, in future actions that came up after. Um, but like I said, maybe Sikhus is easy example because they, they love it. So for them, it's like, yeah, it's super funny, you know? And, um, so I would suggest that maybe in projects always have that part where they can propose something for the future. And as well, um, we always like to maintain the, the contact with them. I have like an automatic email that sends to every participant a year later an email like with an evaluation. Yeah, but, but it's, it's challenging. It's definitely challenging. Thank you. No, I was going to say, like, I think the key, as you mentioned, is the follow-up, no? That's the follow-up. Yeah, it's very exactly. important. And exactly. Yeah, it defines everything. Thank you so much. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Yana. We usually... Oh, sorry. No, no, just with that. We usually do, like, a 30 days before... Um, 30 days after, sorry. Um, an automatic email of mine. And then, um, like, a year later. Sometimes it's not feasible and then we do it through coordinating our entities but it's something really nice as well yeah definitely sustainability long-term engagement are like the, the uh, core uh, challenges for keeping up with these amazing experiences and thank you Jana very much um, I guess it was easy to tell from your own enthusiasm how good of an experience that was